Hey guys, this is Dr. Sean from Hillman Physical Therapy. I uh, hope you guys are all staying safe during uh, these crazy times we're going through. And uh, at Hillman PT, we're taking advantage of the extra time that we have now, and uh, we're gonna start doing video vlogs. And the plan is to start doing maybe one video vlog a week and pick a, pick a diagnosis, and we're gonna talk about ways you guys can at home use exercises to address these symptoms of uh, whether it's low back pain, neck pain, uh, whatever orthopedic condition you guys are going through. So today we picked low back pain and more specifically lumbar stenosis. Now with lumbar stenosis, uh, this is typically something that's going to be found in the older adult population. Um, it's caused from degenerative processes in the spine. Um, I'm going to show you guys a spine model here. <clears throat> so here we got the front of the spine. Um, the vertebrae at the bottom here, the bottom five vertebrae is the lumbar spine. Again, this is the front. And here's the back of the spine. Um, starting here, one, two, three, four, five. That's the lumbar spine again. Um, I'm not sure if you guys see, but the yellow, the ye little yellow protrusions here, those are nerves, okay? So stenosis means narrowing, okay? And basically what happens is the spaces where the nerves come out of the vertebral column, these little spaces here start narrowing, which causes pain. It can also happen where the spinal cord runs, okay, and where the lumbar plexus runs down here. So in the center of the spinal column, it's a little bit harder to see, but you can kind of see in here the yellow. That can also, the stenosis can also happen there where there's narrowing and those kinds of folks would be experiencing pain um, radiating across the entire side of the back, so both sides of the low back. While um, if it was happening either here or here, it'd be more unilateral or one side. Um, these people with stenosis would be experiencing obviously low back pain, but they would also be experiencing some pain that's radiating down into their buttock or even their leg, okay? Um, so with spinal stenosis, in the physical therapy world, we typically call this flexion syndrome. Because usually what happens is bending forward gives relief, okay? It feels better. So if you look at the space, the spaces where those nerves come out, bending forward actually increases the space. It causes those spaces to widen and become larger so there's more room for those nerves to breathe. And then on the contrary, bending backwards, as you can see, narrows it, okay? So it decreases the space. <clears throat> so with spinal stenosis, these folks are usually gonna have a lot more pain with standing and walking. Uh, they're gonna complain about inability to walk further than maybe a block or two because of pain in their back, but also more specifically, usually they complain of the pain down into their legs, like they're sort of cramping sensation. Uh, somebody who does not have stenosis and instead maybe have a, a bulging disc, they would actually usually um, feel better when they're standing and have more pain a lot of times when they're sitting or bending forward. So it's, there's definitely a, a large contrast between the two of spinal stenosis and more of a disc issue. Okay, so I'm gonna start showing you guys some exercises to help to address these symptoms that you may have from lumbar stenosis. Um, I don't know if you guys already know this, but I got this uh, piece of tape here in my belt so that you can guys can visualize what I'm gonna do with this uh, exercise here. So this is a pretty simple exercise, but it can be difficult to teach. So we call this one pelvic tilts, okay? So I want you guys to watch the, um, look at the tape here in my belt. And basically all I'm doing is I'm tilting my pelvis back, and I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but where the tape is rolling back. And what I'm doing is I'm actually flattening my low back against the surface of the table and I'm engaging my abdominals, okay? So I'm resting now, and now I'm tilting back, okay? So what that does is that engages the stomach muscles around your spine to give some support, and it also gets your, uh, your pelvis and your lumbar spine to get moving within a, um, a pain-free tolerance, okay? So you kind of get things moving a little bit, um, getting some fluid into your spine, so those, those, uh, that lumbar spine is getting some lubrication from the movement. 
and this should be pain free. I mean, if you're doing this and it hurts, um, you, you just stop doing it or you just maybe don't do it as intensely, okay? So I typically hold these for about five seconds and you can do about 10 of these, okay? 10 of these at a time, you can do these a couple times a day. It's really a good exercise to do when, you, um, when you're in bed and when you're first getting up in the morning. Next one I'm going to show you, like I said, this is a, a spinal stenosis, it's a, it's a uh, flexion syndrome. So movements where you're actually bending your spine forward typically feels better. So the next exercise I'm going to show you is called a single knee to chest. So all you're doing is you're just grabbing your leg and you're pulling that knee up towards your chest, okay? And you can hold this for, you know, 5, 10 seconds, up to 30 seconds. Some people, they like to kind of bring it in and out like this. And that's fine too. This will, if you truly have spinal stenosis, if your back pain is stemming from spinal stenosis, this should feel good. It shouldn't hurt. I'll do this with my other legs here. here. Or I can hold that for, you know, a long duration, 10, maybe 30 seconds. Next thing you can do is actually just bringing both legs up to your chest, so double knee to chest. So instead of just bringing one, you're bringing both knees up towards your chest, okay? And same thing, you can hold this for 5 or 10 seconds, up to 30 seconds, or you can kind of bring it in and out, okay, to get that movement in your lumbar spine to get things moving again. So when you have that spinal stenosis, your lumbar spine stiffens up, so it's good to get this nice controlled movement in that low back to release those symptoms. Again, that's a good exercise to do when you first get up in the morning, okay, before you get out of bed. Next one um, was lower trunk rotations, okay? So basically what I'm doing is I'm bringing both my feet together, bringing both my knees together, and I'm just going side to side, okay? And I'm trying, and I'm focusing also on keeping my shoulders, I don't know if you can see that in the video, I'm gonna move down. I'm trying to keep my shoulders down on the table while I'm doing this. So I'm trying not to let my shoulders really lift up. Now, sometimes we get patients where they can go one direction really good, and it feels good, they feel like they're getting a great stretch in their back and it releases their symptoms. But then going the other way, it doesn't feel too good. Okay, they can't go as far. So what we would tell you folks is go towards a direction where it feels good, but when you're going the opposite way, stop right before you start getting those symptoms. We don't want you to push through it. It's not one of those no pain, no gain type of deals, okay? You want to just go within your pain-free range, okay? So, and that goes for both ways too. If you can only go a certain range each direction, you only go within that range, and maybe as you loosen up, you can go a little bit further, okay, as your, as your spine loosens up. Okay, another one I'm going to show you guys, we call this an active hamstring stretch, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to pull one leg up towards your chest and work on straightening that knee, okay? And then coming down. And I'm going to hold this for about five seconds, okay? Maybe, maybe at the most ten seconds, you don't need to hold this one too much. Now, you can kind of, with this one, you can kind of play with the range, okay? So if it feels better when you're pulling your knee up a little bit further, you can do that. But keep in mind, you're not going to be able to straighten your leg as much because you're taking up more of the slack of the hamstrings. So now what this does is it stretches your hamstrings, which helps to give release from that, from that cramping sensation. So typically with stenosis, those people, when they're walking and they're standing for long periods of time, they get cramping in their back of their legs. So this helps to kind of release that cramping that they're getting. It also helps to stretch the nerves out in the back of the leg. So this is a really great tool to use at home to address those symptoms. Now if you get really good, I'm not quite there yet, but if you get really good, you can start pointing your toes up like that while you're doing that. And that's really going to create that nerve tension in that leg to help to release those nerves. So again, five to ten, five to ten second holds. You can do this about for ten repetitions. Another thing I want to show you guys, if you're really, really having some intense um, 
back pain from the spinal stenosis um, where it's really debilitating, obviously the first thing you should do is really get this tested out. You know, go see, go see your physician, come see us at physical therapy so that we can really look at this and, uh, um, you know, find the best solution for you. Um, but for you guys who are having really bad symptoms um, and you're afraid to leave the house because of the COVID-19, um, one thing you guys can do, if you have one of these physio balls, um, or if you, you, you know, if you don't have one of these tools, you can even use a wedge or stack a bunch of pillows up on your bed. You can prop your legs up on there. Okay. And just relax your back, all right? So this, this, this position uh, puts your spine in a more neutral configuration. So it enables, those, uh, it enables your back to really rest and relax, and it helps those tight muscles in your low back to relax. So this is a really, really good position to lay in for about five or 10 minutes, okay? Um, it really helps to decompress that spine if you have spinal stenosis. Um, for you guys who don't have as bad of symptoms, you may not notice much of this, but I mean, this is really for those folks who are having really intense symptoms where they're really having a lot of pain whenever they start standing up. Okay, I got two more exercises for you guys. So one common, one common thing we find in people with um, spinal stenosis is that they also have a lot of stiffness in their hips, okay? So they usually have a lot of hip stiffness. So one thing we usually do is we show, um, we show them stretches for their hips as well, and that tends to really help their low back pain. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna move my phone over here so you guys can see me do this next stretch. All right, there we go, perfect. So what I'm going to do with this next one is you're going to take your leg, cross it over your opposite leg, okay, and keeping your spine tall, you're just kind of hinging forward, okay, so you're just leaning forward at your waist, not necessarily bending at your back. And what this does, this should really, um, you know, depending on the leg that you're using, this should really give a nice stretch on that side of that low back, and you may even feel that deep in your hip, okay. Um, if you're getting pain in your groin area, um, you definitely want to back off on this stretch. We don't, we, sh we shouldn't be feeling that too much in our groin. It should be more in the back of the hip and your low back. Okay. I'll do this on the other side too over here. So again, with this one, you can hold this for about 10 seconds, maybe up to 30 seconds. You can kind of go forward into it and back off onto it like this if you want to. Whatever, whatever uh, feels more comfortable. But again, we definitely don't want you guys to push through pain, okay? I and mean, if you're getting pain with this one, then you really should not be doing it. It's not one of those no pain, no gain situations. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my phone back over here. Okay, so this last exercise I'm gonna show you guys is for strengthening your hips, specifically the gluteus medius muscle. I mean, this is a really common thing we see in the physical therapy clinic with these people with spinal stenosis is that they have really, really weak hips. So um, I'll show you this exercise here. So you're gonna be laying on your side. Let's see if you can see, see, see my entire leg. Okay, there we go. So you're gonna be laying on your side and basically all you're gonna be doing is lifting that leg up, the top leg up and coming down. Now usually what I find my patients doing is they like to cheat and they bring their leg forward and lift it up and that makes it a lot easier, but we don't want you to be doing that because then you're not working the muscle group that we want. You're gonna keep that leg back, so it should be kind of aligned with your shoulder, okay? So aligned with your shoulder, that hip joint. And you're gonna look straight up and down. Now if you put your hand on your buttock, when you lift your leg, you should feel those butt muscles tightening and then you know you're doing it right. Now this exercise is too difficult, you can modify it by actually bending your top leg, okay, and then lifting up. And what that does is that shortens the lever arm to make it a little bit easier to lift up. Now this you just do maybe two or three sets at a time, okay? Maybe at, at, at the most you can do 15. Okay? So again, this is the, uh, the version with the leg straight. 
and this is the version with the leg bent, which is the easier version. Okay? All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching and listening. And uh, we're, like I said, we're hoping to start doing this on a more regular basis. So keep your eyes open for the next video. Thanks.